The right of asylum is an ancient juridical concept, under which a person persecuted by their own country may be protected by another sovereign authority, a foreign country, or church sanctuaries. This right was already recognized by the Egyptians, the Greeks and the Hebrews. From where it was adopted into Western tradition, Descartes went to the Netherlands, Voltaire to England, Hobbes to France, and each state offered protection to persecuted foreigners. The Egyptians, Greeks, and Hebrews recognized a religious right of asylum, protecting criminals from legal action to some extent. This principle was later adopted by the established Christian Church, and various rules developed to qualify for protection and just how much protection it was. According to the Council of Orleans in 511, in the presence of Clovis I, asylum was granted to anyone who took refuge in a church, in its dependencies or in the house of a bishop. This protection was given to murderers, thieves or people accused of adultery. Medieval England In England, King Ethelbert of Kent made the first laws regulating sanctuary in about 600 AD. Though Geoffrey of Monmouth in his Historia Regum Britanniae says that the legendary pre-Saxon king Dunvalo Momutius enacted sanctuary laws in, the Momutine laws is recorded by Gildas. In the laws of King Ethelred, the term Gwyth is used. By the Norman era after 1066, there had evolved two kinds of sanctuary. All churches had the lower level kind, but only churches licensed by the king had a broader version. There were at least 22 churches with charters for a broader kind of sanctuary, including Battle Abbey, Beverley, Colchester, Durham, Hexham, Norwich, Ripon, Wells, Winchester Cathedral, Westminster Abbey, and York Minster. Sometimes the criminal had to get to the chapel itself to be protected, and might have to ring a certain bell there, or hold a certain ring or door knocker, or sit on a certain chair, and some of these items survive at very various churches. In other places, there was an area around the church or abbey, sometimes extending as much as a mile and a half, and there would be stone sanctuary crosses marking the boundary of the area. Some of those still exist as well. Thus it could become a race between the felon and medieval law officers to the nearest sanctuary boundary, and could make the serving of justice upon the fleet of foot a difficult proposition. Church sanctuaries were regulated by common law. An asylum seeker was to confess sins, surrender weapons, and be placed under the supervision of the head of the church or abbey where they had fled. They then had 40 days to make one of two choices surrender to secular authorities and stand trial for the alleged crimes, or confess their guilt and be sent into exile, by the shortest route and never return without the king's permission. Anyone who did come back could be executed by the law and or excommunicated by the church. If the suspect chose to confess their guilt and abjure, they would do so in a public ceremony, usually at the gate of the church grounds. They would surrender their possessions to the church and any landed property to the crown. The coroner, a medieval official, would then choose a port city from which the fugitive should leave England. The fugitive would set out barefooted and bareheaded, carrying a wooden cross staff as a symbol of protection under the church. Theoretically they would stay to the main highway, reach the port and take the first ship out of England. In practice, however, the fugitive could get a safe distance away, abandon the cross staff and take off and start a new life. However, one can safely assume the friends and relatives of the victim knew of this ploy and would do everything in the power to make sure this did not happen, or indeed that the fugitive never reached their intended port of call, becoming a victim of vigilante justice under the pretense of a fugitive who wandered too far off the main highway while trying to escape, knowing the grim options. Some fugitives rejected both choices and opted for an escape from the asylum before the 40 days were up.
Others simply made no choice and did nothing. Since it was illegal for the victim's friends to break into an asylum, the church would deprive the fugitive of food and water until a decision was made. Henry VIII changed the rules of asylum, reducing to a short list the types of crimes which were allowed to claim asylum. The medieval system of asylum was finally abolished entirely by James I in 1623. During the Wars of the Roses, when the Yorkists or Lancastrians would suddenly get the upper hand by winning a battle. Some adherents of the losing side might find themselves surrounded by adherents of the other side and not able to get back to their own side. Upon realizing this situation they would rush to sanctuary at the nearest church until it was safe to come out. A prime example is Queen Elizabeth Woodville, consort of Edward IV of England. In 1470, when the Lancastrians briefly restored Henry VI to the throne, Queen Elizabeth was living in London with several young daughters. She moved with them into Westminster for sanctuary, living there in royal comfort until Edward IV was restored to the throne in 1471 and giving birth to their first son Edward V during that time. When King Edward IV died in 1483, Elizabeth took her five daughters and youngest son and again moved into sanctuary at Westminster, to be sure she had all the comforts of home. She brought so much furniture and so many chests that the workmen had to knock holes in some of the walls to get everything in fast enough to suit. Her Modern Political Asylum. Article 14 of the Universal Declaration of Human Rights states that everyone has the right to seek and to enjoy another country's asylum from persecution. The United Nations 1951 Convention relating to the status of refugees and the 1967 Protocol relating to the status of refugees guides. National legislation concerning political asylum. Under these agreements, a refugee is a person who is outside their own country's territory owing to fear of persecution on protected grounds. Protected grounds include race, caste, nationality, religion, political opinions and membership and or participation in any particular social group or social activities. Rendering true victims of persecution to their persecutor is a particularly odious violation of a principle called non-refoulement, part of the customary and trucial law of nations. These are the accepted terms and criteria as principles and a fundamental part in the 1951 United Nations Convention relating to the status of refugees non-refoulement order. Since the 1990s, victims of sexual persecution have come to be accepted in some countries as a legitimate category for asylum claims. When claimants can prove that the state is unable or unwilling to provide protection, right of asylum by country of refuge European Union asylum in European Union member states formed over a half century by application of the Geneva Convention of 28 July 1951 on the status of refugees. Common policies appeared in the 1990s in connection with the Schengen Agreement so that asylum seekers unsuccessful in one member state would not reapply in another. The common policy began with the Dublin Convention in 1990. It continued with the implementation of Eurodic and the Dublin Regulation in 2003 and the October 2009 adoption of two proposals by the European Commission. The modern French right of asylum is recognized by the 1958 Constitution, vis-à-vis -vis the paragraph 4 of the Preamble to the Constitution of 1946, to which the Preamble of the 1958 Constitution directly refers. The Constitution of 1946 incorporated of parts of the 1793 Constitution which had guaranteed the right of asylum to anyone persecuted because of his action for freedom, who were unable to seek protection in their home countries. In addition to the constitutional right to asylum, the modern French right to asylum is enshrined on a legal and regulatory basis in the Code de la Entrée et du Séjour des Étrangers et du Droit, 
de Seal. France also adheres to international agreements which provide for application modalities for the right of asylum, such as the 1951 United Nations Convention relating to the status of refugees, the additional 1967 Protocol, Articles K1 and K2 of the 1992 Maastricht Treaty as well as the 1985 Schengen Agreement, which defined EU immigration policy. Finally, the right of asylum is defined by Article 18 of the Charter of Fundamental Rights of the European Union. Some of the criteria for which an asylum application can be rejected include i. Passage via safe third country e. Safe country of origin i. Safety threat or iv. Fraudulent application the December 10, 2003, law limited political asylum through two main restrictions. The notion of internal asylum. The request may be rejected if the foreigner may benefit from political asylum on a portion of the territory of their home country. The OFPRA now makes a list of allegedly safe countries which respect political rights and principles of liberty. If the demander of asylum comes from such a country, the request is processed in 15 days and receives no social assistance protection. They may contest the decision, but this does not suspend any deportation order. The first list, enacted in July 2005, included as safe countries Benin, Cape Verde, Ghana, Mali, Mauritius Island, India, Senegal, Mongolia. Georgia, Ukraine, Bosnia and Croatia. It had the effect of reducing in six months by about 80% the number of applicants from these countries. The second list, passed in July 2006, included Tanzania, Madagascar, Niger, Albania and Macedonia. While restricted, the right of political asylum has been conserved in France amid various anti-immigration laws. Some people claim that, apart from the purely judicial path, the bureaucratic process is used to slow down and ultimately reject what might be considered as valid requests. According to Le Figaro, France granted 7,000 people the status of political refugee in 2006, out of a total of 35,000 requests in 2005. The OFPRA in charge of examining the legitimacy of such requests granted less than 10,000 from a total of 50,000 requests. Numerous exiles from South American dictatorships, particularly from Augusto Pinochet's Chile and the Dirty War in Argentina, were received in the 1970s 80s. Since the 2001 invasion of Afghanistan, tens of homeless Afghan asylum seekers have been sleeping in a park in Paris near the Gare de la train station. Although their demands haven't been yet accepted, their presence has been tolerated. However, since the end of 2005, NGOs have been noting that the police separate Afghans from other migrants during raids and expel via charters those who have just arrived at Garda by train and haven't had time to demand asylum. United Kingdom In the 19th century, the United Kingdom accorded political asylum to various persecuted people, among whom were many members of the socialist movement. With the 1845 attempted bombing of the Greenwich Royal Observatory and the 1911 siege of Sydney Street in the context of the propaganda of the deed, actions, political asylum was restricted. United States The United States recognizes the right of asylum of individuals as specified by international and federal law. A specified number of legally defined refugees who apply for refugee status overseas as well as those applying for asylum after arriving in the U.S. are admitted annually. As noted in the article specifically about asylum and refugees in the United States, since World War II, more refugees have found homes in the U.S. than any other nation and more than 2 million refugees have arrived in the U.S. since 1980. During much of the 1990s, the United States accepted over 100,000 refugees per year, though this figure has recently decreased to around 50,000 per year in the first decade of the 21st century, due to greater security concerns.
As for asylum seekers, the latest statistics show that 86,400 persons sought sanctuary in the United States in 2001. Before the September 11 attacks, individual asylum applicants were evaluated in private proceedings at the U.S. Immigration and Naturalization Services. Despite this, concerns have been raised with the U.S. asylum and refugee determination processes. A recent empirical analysis by three legal scholars described the U.S. asylum process as a game of refugee roulette, that is to say that the outcome of asylum determinations depends in large part on the personality of the particular adjudicator to whom an application is randomly assigned, rather than on the merits of the case. The very low numbers of Iraqi refugees accepted between 2003 and 2007 exemplifies concerns about the United States' refugee processes. The Foreign Policy Association reported that, perhaps the most perplexing component of the Iraq refugee crisis, has been the inability for the U.S. to absorb more Iraqis following the 2003 invasion of the country. To date, the U.S. has granted less than 800 Iraqis refugee status, just 133 in 2007. By contrast, the U.S. granted asylum to more than 100,000 Vietnamese refugees during the Vietnam War. The 2000 documentary film Well-Founded Fear, from filmmaker Shari Robertson and Michael Camerini marked the first time that a film crew was privy to the private proceedings at the U.S. Immigration and Naturalization Services where individual asylum officers ponder the often life-or-death fate of the majority of immigrants seeking asylum. It provided the first high-profile, behind-the-scenes look at the process for seeking asylum in the United States. The film was featured at the Sundance Film Festival documentary competition and was broadcast in June 2000 on PBS as part of POV. Between 2004 and 2007, nearly 4,000 Venezuelans claimed political asylum in the United States and almost 50% of them were granted. In contrast, in 1996, only 328 Venezuelans claimed asylum, and a mere 20% of them were granted. According to USA Today, the number of asylums being granted to Venezuelan claimants has risen from 393 in 2009 to 969 in 2012. Other references agree with the high number of political asylum claimants from Venezuela, confirming that between 2000 and 2010, the United States have granted them with 4,500 political asylums.